Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. going on we here dude for the first the, the first interview of, of, of the beyond the ball podcast man earl man welcome man welcome i appreciate that i'm extremely humble um and excited to be i'm a part of the movement yeah man man i appreciate you taking taking the time to hop on and and earl you know like i know the people out there don't know just yet but you know i, I met you what not even two three weeks ago Yep. But since since we got connected, shout out to Jordan Isom, shout shout out to Swerver. Uh, but since 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 he linked us up, and since we got connected, man, I've been seeing you uh, do the Instagram lives. I've been seeing you really pour into to these youth. I've been seeing you doing development training. So just just to everybody else out there, just give a quick snapshot of a little bit about what what you do, man. What what you got going on, man? First and foremost, I praise to the Most High God. Uh, for without that, there's nothing I'd be able to do. Um, but basically been in player development for nine years, been in actual um, club programming from a team standpoint um, for the past five, well, this is year five, mm -hmm. and, and probably for the last year or so, have really grown into sports marketing um, and management in terms of hosting events, camps, apparel and just the business of sports as a whole um and through it all just really trying to create development and exposure opportunities for basketball players at all skill levels nice man nice so where so where did so where did this story start of of earl rooks man where like where had you you know when the first time you knew that, that this was potentially your lane or just just take take us back take us back Man, it's crazy. So, like, I always played basketball. I'm from Dallas. Um, played basketball at Carter High School. Um, played basketball in college at a small school in Indiana um, called Wabash College, where I actually majored in economics. So, going through college, I'm a, I'm a smaller guy, 5'8". Um, so, in college at that point, it kind of hit me like you're really – my opportunities to have a long career as a pro um, really didn't exist. Mm. Um, so my goal was to be a corporate executive um, upon graduation. I started a career with, I actually interned with him two summers while I was in college. Um, but once I graduated, I went on to work full time at Capital One um, in various roles, process management, project management, um, different type of operation support roles. Um, worked with Capital One for five years. Somewhere during that time period, probably two years in, I was about 24. Yeah. I was in the gym working. I have a younger brother. Um, and at the time, he was still in college. So we were in the gym, and I was working with him. And just kind of, he was getting some shots home from a break. We were doing some work. And after the workout, a parent walked up to me and was like, hey, how much do you charge? I was like, I'm just working with my brother. I'm really not. It's nothing like organized. It's not a big yeah. thing. I just work with my brother. And so they were like, basically, I don't, they didn't care. <laughs> um, we really like what you were doing. Here's my number. When you figure it out, call me. Oh, wow. Because um, I would like for my kid to work with you. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went home that night, gave him a call, came up with some price. It was super cheap. Just whatever. Just mm -hmm. cool. Um, Man, that one kid turned into three, and three turned into ten, and ten has grown to where we are now, where we probably have well over 150 clients from grassroots to pro. Um, and so I was doing that at the same time as my corporate career. So I spent five years at Capital One, another four years at New York Life. Um, at the age of 30, I was a corporate vice president and a partner um, at a Fortune 100 company. Mm. Um, so like literally. I got a corner office and I'm leading teams, um, cross-functional teams across the country. And at the same time, I'm 
training every uh, night, every weekend, like literally every day. Um, my basketball teams are starting to grow. It's grown from two teams to 10 teams to 20 teams. And we're in Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio. So I knew and I felt it at some point that those two roles were going to collide. And I was either going to have to choose between being an executive or kind of pursuing basketball further and more seriously. Um, and I just found myself being in my office, taking recruiting calls, being in meetings, responding to text uh, in regards to like basketball training and stuff like that. But when I was in that gym, I wasn't thinking about nothing else. Um, and that's just kind of how I knew where my heart was. And so I just made a tough decision one day and walked into my boss's office. And, like, ironically enough, because they kind of knew what I was doing on site. So, mm -hmm. ironically enough, he looked at me when I walked in there and said, it's that time, huh? Mm. Like, I'm, I kid you not. I said not a word. I walked in there. He just looked at me and said, it's that time, huh? I was like, yeah. I think I'm going to step away. So I walked away from a job where I was making 160000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, and basic, and I was making probably a quarter, not even a quarter of that um, training at the time. Um, and so I walked away, took a step of faith. And that was three or four years ago. And I haven't looked for a job since. Wow. Dang. So you was, so you was just training your brother, just, just, just helping him out? Yeah. And then he, how, how, how much younger is your brother than you? Five years. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you, you already had the drills and you, you knew it all already. Like, I mean, based yeah, on. I, mean, I was like 24 and my real brother was time freshman, sophomore in college. So he's about 18, 19. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's one of those things is where he kind of came on. We were like, just get in the gym and just putting him through some stuff. And here we are. Man, man. Wow. So, so going back to when you was in college, you said, well, now nah, going back to when you were, um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, going back to in college and, and you were talking about how, you know, you didn't see the, the potential for you to be a pro. Like, how, how did you really, how, how did you really accept that? Because I mean, there's people like, you know, like a, like a Earl Boinkins and you know, there's other people who feel that they have an upside, but they just haven't had their fair shot. Like when you came to that, like you, your coaches talked with you about that, or you just were being real with yourself, which is like, I don't, I don't know if that's in the, if that's in the cards for me. So for me to see was planted um early, not that I quite bought into it completely, but mm -hmm. as I was making my college decision, my godfather actually was like, "Hey, I had some smaller Division One offers, um, nothing great." from a basketball standpoint, mm -hmm. but I could have went on somewhere and said, hey, I went to a D1, right? Yeah. Um, but my godfather actually spoke to me in terms of the first time I ever heard this term, delayed gratification. Mm. And so it was basically in my college making decision, it was like saying, you can go to this school and enjoy the next four years of your life and have to bust your tail for the next 40 years of your life or struggle for the next 40. Mm. Or you could make a business decision and you can go to school where you may not necessarily want to go for the next four years of your life and enjoy the next four. Mm. And so based on that guidance, and at that time, it was kind of decision like, hey, sport may not always be there, but you got to go somewhere where you could like provide for yourself and um, operate in the real world. And so I made that decision at that time. And so as I was playing ball, I mean, it was – where the game is going. I'm 5'8", point guards at the pro level. There are your um, Nate Robinsons. There are your Earl Boykins. But they are a few far and so far between, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so just being realistically, I wasn't holding on to pro dreams. And there's guys that, again, like when I came out, uh, I walked into a pretty strong corporate opportunity. So even my friends that were going overseas at my age, so if it was an NBA, it was nothing. Yeah, the guys that were going to play overseas, they were getting contracts for three thousand a month, four thousand a month. I was making double what they were making um, in a corporate position, and then a lot of them, even then, were having to come back home. And so that's the ugly part of the game um, that people don't necessarily understand is unless you're coming out of a Texas or a Duke or Kentucky and going overseas, 
you may not be making prime dollar. Um, so a lot of those guys that were going overseas to play were coming back home and working in college, working in my call centers in the summer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I have so I have like a I have a few uh, good friends that 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 went over and, and played overseas, and then you know, like I know one just because you get signed to go, you could get signed for a month, and then you'll be back next month, and then. If if you're a father, a husband, or you even trying to provide for yourself, and then you're trying to get another job, nobody wants to sign you up for a job that they're gonna invest training dollars in, so you can leave two months down the line. Yep. So, man, yeah, this and and I, and I think that's a piece of it that's like so crazy about it—the business aspect of it. Because yeah, they can they can bring you in, but then if you get injured. Then, then you you gonna be you gonna be off on the same plane that brought you in. Yeah, thanks. So, oh, man. Okay, so you said you said delayed gratification, Earl. Talk to me. Talk to you said delayed gratification, man. If so, if if there's somebody out there, well, there is. But there there's this thing I know I know you're very familiar with the transfer portal, man. Yeah. And 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 you said delayed gratification, which could mean which could mean somebody sticking it out at their university, at their school, and, you know, waiting their time to get their opportunity. But there's a lot of kids hopping in the transfer portal, and they're trying to go to another another team, another situation that might not be the best fit. Can you, can you just talk a little bit about that and delay gratification? Man, the time we live in right now, staying power is at an all-time low. Mm. Um, and that's not just college kids. That's marriages. That's companies as adults we work for. Um, you can see all, like tenure is at a hard time low. And so like that even trickles down to college kids and hey, this don't feel like a great situation. I'm about to bounce. Um, personally, I remember my freshman year in college. Mm. Calling home, first semester, middle of the year, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not staying here. I want to go. I want to start reaching out to some of those coaches that were recruiting me before. Like, I'm out. Like, I don't like it here. Mm. And I remember, uh, like, my godmother just being like, no, you're staying. <laughs> like, you're not going nowhere. You're staying. Like, work harder. Do oh. whatever you got to do to create a better situation for yourself. Find a friend. Oh. Just study. Like, you're not leaving. Like, you're going to stick it through. Like, once you make a commitment, you're going to stick it through. Mm. Um, and so, like, that just kind of brings me back. Like, and I hate to make things about generation or generational, but just it's, like, it's a microwave environment, right? Mm. Like, nothing is slow cooked. Nobody um, really – like, and, and you, again, going, taking it back to the familiar situation. Like, when my grandmother made chicken, it was in the refrigerator a week ago, right? It was mm. marinating. When my mom started making chicken, it was in the refrigerator the night before. When I make chicken, I'm going to the store when I leave my office, and then because I want it immediate, I don't want to wait on nothing. Yeah. So you just see it getting, um, it becomes intensified as generations go. So now, when I was growing up, I didn't expect to play at a high. If I went to a high major school until like my maybe my junior season, kids are expecting to play immediately, right? They freshman year going immediately without the context or without the understanding that there was a you two years before you that came in and have been playing that have put in so much sweat equity that has mm -hmm. so much more experience and probably just as talented as you that you're not going to just hop over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you come in, you learn, you develop, you grow, you watch and be ready when you get your shot. Um, that's just not the way people are thinking about it right now. Man, yeah, I think you said a really good point because just, just what you talking about the chicken, I know a lot of people talk about like like just thinking older times like the slow cooker. Mm -hmm. You know, how people, you know, they they go in, they 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 put the chicken in, they they pour all the vegetables and all that in. Maybe the night before church, or maybe just the morning before you mm -hmm. leave, and then come back five four hours later, and then you have like that perfect situation. And and just to your point, I mean. Man, I've seen like so much of that though. Just just understanding that 
I would love to roll out and, and start, but just like you talking about as far as context, that the person who's been there two years earlier ha has already developed a relationship with coach. The person who's been there two years earlier already knows the schemes. They, they know that they know the way that coach likes the ball to be passed two and three times before they get a bucket. And if somebody else is trying to come in like a, oh Lord, I don't want to say it, but like a, like a Carmelo Anthony, just trying yeah. to come in and do their own thing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, because I feel for, you know, I feel for the, for the student, for the student athlete out there like that, because I, I was the guy who was just trying to wait for my turn. Earl, I was trying to wait. I was trying to wait. But man, when, when it was that third year and I transferred in from a junior college, I was like, man, I'm tired of waiting. I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. But now, now looking back though, cause you know, hindsight 2020 now looking back, it's like, I, I wasn't ready for, I wasn't ready for what I was asking for. Mm -hmm. if, if coach put me in the game, the guy who, who he chose, they were ready for the opportunity. I, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to step up. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely something to think about uh, for, for everybody out there listening in, in podcast land, man, but Earl, man, just, just talk, talk a little bit about, man, just, just the new normal right now in, in training during COVID-19, man. Uh, it definitely challenged the innovator and uh, all personal trainers. Um, it feels like overnight, like the business completely did a 180. Um, all my sessions, and when I say all, I do mean 100%. So in the past, I've always thought about virtual training. Mm -hmm. like, cool to put it on the app. It'd be cool to do some, uh, but never really got around to it because the business was what it was. It was face-to-face -face interaction. Um, COVID hit, and one day you have a gym with, with 30 people in it. The next day there's zero. Um, and so I think there's been a divide of people who've been able to adapt quickly and figure out where's, where the opportunities are and where the business goes next mm -hmm. um, and the people who haven't. Um, so where the business feels like it's going right now is completely virtual. Shout out to platforms like Instagram, um, Zoom, Periscope, like Zoom stock prices had to have done a hundred X, um, just being right there in a the moment, ready to go, um, to enable conversation, to enable, uh, just communication. And so like a lot of digital, like a lot of digital, uh, whether it be live workouts, whether it be moving things to app. Um, I also predict like people will start to tune in more to like podcasts, um, papers, like mm -hmm. we'll go back to reading. And I think that's what this break has done a little bit too. It started to put people back into the goodness of life. Um, like I look outside, people are walking and jogging and riding bikes. Mm -hmm. I don't know the last time I've seen that. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people are starting to read. Um, so it's starting to put, and I hate, I don't want to say like the old times were the great times, but it's starting to put things in, in order and put some things in perspective. And so I think there's some, old things again like writing articles um some audio that people will tap into and be able to use for their benefit from a business standpoint and then there's also some newer things like the zoom and the the digital the youtubes of the world uh, where i think people have the opportunity to take advantage of and able to reach out and connect um with their followers yeah man de definitely and, and, and like i like i was t telling you offline uh just before we started just before we started recording um that I think the, the way that you've been investing in your clients and into your tribe and into your, you know, your people in, in, in such a way, um, because one, I, I see the, I see the activity and the engagement uh, because every once in a while, even though I don't, you know, Earl, I, today was the last time I picked up a basketball because I did it with, with the Twitter live, but outside yeah. of today, I don't know the last time I picked up a basketball, just, you know, to do like some drills or some training. Cause you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm out the game now. I'm out the game. Cause yeah. I get too competitive, uh, but but man, but really seeing how how intentional you really are and how much like because you're giving you're giving these kids. It's, it's not like you on on Instagram live just doing. Hey, look, we're, we're gonna do we're gonna do a one two dribble today. Like yeah. you're giving them some real in game training. So like, 
what was it that made you say, I need to be doing it? Cause I, cause I talk with, I talk with Isom and Isom said before you weren't even really on Instagram live like that. I don't know, you know, how accurate that was. I tell you like, uh, lit when COVID <laughs> hit the whole thing changed. Like I had always been active on Instagram and mm -hmm. on Twitter. Um, but like actual leveraging like live communication, mm -mm, never. Uh, man, man. But yeah, so I mean, every, every everybody who's out there, I don't know how much longer Earl's gonna gonna be doing this. But Earl, just sh share your Instagram so that people can know where to follow you, and and also just share really quick just just the schedule that you're currently doing right now uh, with the, with the Instagram live workouts and the training. Cool. Uh, my Instagram is Earl. Rooks underscore T two the number two the letter D Earl Rooks underscore T two D and T two D stands for Train to Dominate. Um, the business Instagram handle is Full Throttle underscore T two D. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure I put put that in the show notes. Make sure people know where uh, where where to find that, where to connect with you. Cause man, like I said, Earl, you be on there doing real moves, and it's not like you're doing the same moves every day. You're doing some footwork stuff. Every workout, every workout is different. So I'm going twice a day, different workouts both times. Just really? for the people that want to go to a day, every workout is different. Come on, Earl, you I've gonna duplicated, do it? I've duplicated workouts once, and that's because I just really liked that one. Like I really liked it, so I did it again. But other than that, it's new material, new content every day. <laughs> Earl, I don't, I don't know if you realize or not, but you, but you're really you're from 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 what I see, from what I see, you you really leading this movement right now in in just live training and development right now. And like I said, we've been connected maybe a month now to date. But man, yeah, just 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 keep it up. I I love seeing the seeing the interviews or the videos and hearing. Um, some of the young ladies you work with, some of the players you work with, uh, man. So, so definitely, definitely keep that up. So now, Earl, I want to, I want to ask you two more things. I'm, I'm gonna let you go. I know you're busy, man. I know you got some more drills and stuff like that to get to. <laughs> but so, what would like what would be your word of advice just to a, to a student athlete right now? And, and and we'll say we'll say to a senior student athlete, what would be your word of advice? To a senior student athlete, a senior student first and foremost, be a student, right? Um, take care of everything you got to take care of academically. Focus in the classroom. Focus on your book. I know the environment has been shifted quite a bit right now. You're out of the classroom at home. Um, lock in still. Even though things are virtual, even though your classes are online, get it done and get it done at a high level. Um, and I would kind of overall – Whatever it is you're passionate about, be passionate about it. Like, give it your all. Commit to it. Um, you can't say you want to be a Division One high-level athlete and you play video game. You spend more time playing video games than you do working on your actual game. You know what I mean? So whatever you're committed to and whatever you're passionate about, be passionate about it and give your all to it. 110%. None less. No letdowns. That's good. That's good. All gas, no brakes, huh? All gas, no brakes. Working relentlessly. <laughs> oh man, that's it. That's it. And and now, Earl, man, this 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 the segment of the show, man, where you get the opportunity just just to highlight, uh, either, well, just get the opportunity just to highlight uh, an individual you know that that's out there that they're really working, they're putting in work, but they might be overlooked, or somebody you just want to just show love to, man. Who who is that individual? Uh, a couple of angles. One is actually another trainer, um, Adrian Mercado from UTLB. The, he's actually the guy that called me. He went live on Facebook and had a strong following, um, really good outing, and he called me that night. Didn't have to. We, he could definitely see me as a competitor. Um, called me that night. was like, hey, E, I got to tell you about what I did today. He was like, I went live. I got X amount of people to join. I didn't charge anything, but it was a great workout. It was a great experience. It's something that you might want to look into. Would I have made it there at some point, at some time? I'm pretty sure I would have. However, uh, much respect to Adrian for giving me that call, sharing the love, putting me on game. 
Like, I respect that 100. There's one kid that I got to mention. It's Jazzy Owens, actually. Uh, Is she the one from Baylor? Nah, she's actually a sophomore right now. Okay. Um, but super under the radar, but an amazing kid. She just won state. And so, like, oh, recently, like, her name is, uh, like, her name has started to ring across. But okay. like, before now, everybody's respected as good, but she's, like, really stepped up. Um, no returning starters from her team. Took the team. They won state. Wow. Um, super athlete, super student, like, great grades, like, a great leader, extremely vocal. Um, I just had to mention that because that, after I said that, I was like, Jazzy's the one, like, of all people, boy, girl, no matter what grade. All right, she's doing big things. Man, but Coach Earl, man, I definitely appreciate you taking time to, to hop on, man, beyond the ball, being our, being our first guest. And, man, I, I'm, I'm definitely excited to continue to see, you know, everything that you're doing and watching it grow and watching the impact that you're making uh, by doing things the right way, really adding value to these, these, these individuals out here. And, man, just, you know, just showing the love. So, absolutely, absolutely. Coach Earl, I appreciate you. Man, this is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones.